Hello, I'm Bird FM and welcome to FM Scout. Today we bring you another episode in our Into the Future series and in this episode today we're going to be telling you all about the famous wonder kid Martin Odegaard. Now before I do that, I just want to point you over in the direction of my channel, Bird FM. I've got a series at the minute, a Let's Play series on Football Manager 2017 with Huddersfield Town called Bird in the Hood. I enjoy making it, it's a lot of fun, hopefully you'll check it out. Now, back to Martin. Here he is, he's at Real Madrid. He's 17 years old and he's already played six times for Norway, which is fantastic. Now, I think everyone's heard of him. A couple of years ago, he was snapped up by Real Madrid for 2.9 million and they've paid him a whopping £81,000 a week. A contract that's going to last until 2021. Now, he's left footed, his personality is fairly professional. His media description is just an attacking midfielder. And his player traits, he's got two. He likes to play one-twos and he likes to cut inside from the right wing. Now, he can actually play out wide on the right naturally. And he can also play naturally in the centre. He can cover you a lot of positions in midfield, but his main two at the minute, attacking midfield centre and out wide right. But it will be interesting to see if he can improve on any of his other positional areas. So if we have a look at his actual ability now while he's 17, and I use a traffic light system, and if a player has a stat of 18 or above, it'll be green. So at the minute he has no greens, but he does have a lot of 17s. His technique 17, his first touch is 17, his agility is 17. And then going forward, he does have other ability that's fantastic. His dribbling's 15, his passing's 14, his vision's 15, his composure's 14, his flare's 15. He's got some speed as well as acceleration, he's 15. So this lad's got the base of a fantastic player, of a potential world-class player. Can that be built on? We'll have to wait and see how his career pans out. Now if we look at his achievements page, he hasn't achieved too much just yet. He's only 17 years old. But, like I said earlier, he's already played for Norway. He made his international debut in 2014. He scored his first ever senior goal in 2014. And he made his senior debut for his old club in 2014 so it'll be nice to see if he can build on this list and add some big major trophies to it and here on his history page you can see he had his move to Real Madrid in 2014-15 for 2.9 million he played one game made his debut then he's gone down to Real Madrid's B team played 11 times for them scored one goal and the last two years I think he spent in the under 19 so it'd be interesting to see if he can get some moves at least a loan move, at least start playing some football because I think he needs to at this age. So, as we always do in this series, we're going to jump into the future and take a look at him at the next stage of his career. Right, we've jumped to the summer of 2022 and he's now 23 years old and as you can see, he's still at Real Madrid and he's worth £8 million, so he's definitely improved over the last five and a bit years. He's still on his £81,000 a week deal, but it's been extended to the year 2025. Position-wise, he's definitely improved his central midfield ability, so he looks like he can play there a lot better. That's nice to see. He's obviously still left-footed. His personality is still fairly professional. His media description is now a flamboyant attacking midfielder. And his player traits, he still just has the two player traits. Stat-wise, he's definitely improved. I can see speed's improved and a few other areas improved. But let's have a look at that in a bit more detail. So here we are with his technicals at 17. Now, if we just add his technicals at 23, you can see he's definitely improved. Um, and his corners have improved, his crossings improved, his dribbling's improved. Finishing's still at 10. First touch is still at 17. His free kick's improved by 2. His heading's improved by 1. Long shots by 1. Long throws by 1. His markings improved as well by three. Passing has gone up to 15. Penalty taking is the same. Tackling has been improved by one. And his technique is the same. Now, if we move over to his mentals, let's have a look. And his aggression stayed at seven. His anticipation's improved. Bravery's improved. Composure's improved. Concentration's improved. Decisions, determination, his flair, his leadership, his off the ball, positioning. His teamwork hasn't improved, his vision's improved, and his work rate's improved. So mentally, though, I think he's really shown a lot of signs of improvement. That's great to see. Now, here we are with his physicals, and as he's got older, he's becoming a man. We expect these to change. Let's have a look. His acceleration, now that's improved. He's gone up to 17, so he's now, you know, he's got some, got some good speed there. 
His agility is still at 17. His balance has improved by three, which is great to see. His balance is now on 16. His jumping reach is the same. His fitness has improved. His pace has improved by three. His stamina has improved and his strength's gone up by a lot, by six. So he's definitely becoming a much better player. Let's have a look at his history and as you can see, and as I thought, he was going to get shipped out on loan. But that's a good thing because at least he's been playing some football and he's been to some great clubs. I mean, some fantastic clubs. He went on loan to England, to the Premier League and played for Middlesbrough, where he played 14 times, scoring two goals, set one goal up. Then he went on loan to Fiorentina, where he played 34 times in Serie A. That's fantastic, that. Then he went to Rome, two years. Played a lot of games, 65 games in total. That's some great experience. Three years in Italy. That's some good experience. He then spent a year in Germany at Schalke in the Bundesliga. Played 16 times. Then he went back to Serie A. Played for Napoli 34 times. So this kid is 23 years old. He's still signed for Real Madrid. But he's now played in the Premier League, the Serie A and the Bundesliga. Do you know what I mean? That is, that is fantastic. But is that going to be enough for this young lad? Or does he need to make a permanent move? If we look at his overall achievements, you can see he got actually got relegated with Middlesbrough in the Premier League. But in Italy, he's made a name for himself. He's got Fiorentina's overall best 11. Won player of the week a few times when he was at Roma. And he's got in team of the week as well when he's at Napoli. So, yeah, fantastic really. But I'd like to see him make a permanent move or at least start playing properly for Real Madrid. Let's have a look at the Golden Boy Awards. Just in case, you know, one of these good seasons he's had out on loan, he caught the eye. Of everyone and won the golden boy unfortunately he hasn't and um, still i think he's still young enough just how he might be too old now but you know i'd like to have seen him win at least one golden boy award here we are we've jumped another five years into the future and martin odegaard is now 28 years old what some would call the prime of a footballer's career and surprisingly he's now playing in france for lille now that surprises me it did surprise me until i checked lille's history and saw that they had a tycoon takeover. Now that is something I love in these new games of Football Manager. The fact that a team can be taken over by a tycoon and can do well. So he's now at Lil, and he definitely has improved as a player. He's not really improved his positioning. He can still just play them two roles naturally. He's still there for it, obviously. He's still only fairly professional with his personality. But his media description has now changed to a world-class attacking midfielder. So he's now a world-class player, which is what I wanted him to become. Um, I expected him to become because he had he had the, the basis of becoming a world-class player. So that's good to see. Player traits, though, he still hasn't added anything else to his game. He's still only got the two player traits, which is plays one two and likes to cut inside from the right. And if you look at the top, he's now worth fifty-three million pounds and he's on one hundred eighty-five thousand pound a week. And his contract runs out in 2030. Let's just have a look at some of his um, abilities and how his stats have improved over the last five years. Let's have a look at his technicals. And as you can see, we've now added this extra column where he's 28 years old. And he's shown some significant signs of improvement. And he's finally getting some greens, which means he's got some attributes at 18 or above. Now, his corners have improved. His crossing hasn't improved. His dribbling hasn't improved. His finishing improved by one. His first touch by two, which is on now on 19, which is brilliant. His free kick taking has gone up by one. His heading has gone up by one. Long shots by one. Long throws have stayed the same. His marking has improved. His passing has improved by two. Penalty taking by two. Tackling stayed the same. And his techniques now on 18. Now if we jump over to his mentals and have a look at those. His aggression stayed at seven, which I like. His anticipation has jumped up by three, which is good. He's got braver, his composure has improved by 2 and is now on 18. Concentration has got better, decision making stayed the same, his determination stayed the same. His flares improved by 1, his leadership's improved by 1, off the ball stayed the same, positioning's improved by 1, teamwork by 1, vision's gone up to 18, which is now on a green, which I love, and his work rate stayed the same. If you have a look at his physicals, now these should have improved because he's now in his peak years. And if we have a look, his acceleration is still on 17, his agility is improved, balance has stayed the same, jumping stayed the same, fitness, pace, they've stayed the same. His stamina's improved by two, which is good, and his strength has stayed the same. So he's put a bit of weight on. I mean, if you have a look at him when he was 17, he was just under 11 stone. By the time he got to 23, he's gone up to 11 stone, 9 pounds. 
and now is an 11 stone 11 pounds so definitely uh, bulked up if we look at his history you can see he played for Chelsea for three years he made a big money move not long after we last looked at him when he was 23 joined Chelsea for 33.5 million Looked like he played every season it'll be interesting to have a look in a minute see if he won anything with Chelsea um, and then he made his massive money move his 42.5 million pound move to Lille where he's now been for the last two years and he's about to start his third season but look at his achievements while he was at Chelsea he became the most expensive Spanish player at 30 million fair enough and um, he got in the team in a week a few times he was runner up in the FA Cup so he nearly got a trophy and uh, was inducted into the Chelsea overall best 11 named in the Chelsea season or best 11 and yeah surprised they sold him but they did couldn't turn down a total of 54 million pounds now if you look at his uh, achievements while he's been at Lille he's been named in team of the week a lot and finally won a trophy the Coupe de Ligue and that's it so far but oh he's, he's also been inducted into Lille's best overall 11 but you need to start seeing him win some league titles and it'd be interesting to see will he stay at Lille or will he make another big money move towards the end of his career and um, let's find out right we've jumped five years into the future and he's still at Lille which is great to see maybe all those years of jumping around on loan going to different clubs has made him realise he just wanted to spend the rest of his career being loyal to one team now he's 33 years old he's played for Norway 133 times scored 28 goals his value has dropped to 3.4 million but that comes with age he's still earning £185,000 a week on a deal that will run out in the year 2033 ability wise he's still looking fantastic really he's looking really good he's left footed still his personality is still fairly professional his media description at 33 years old is still a world class attacking midfielder he hasn't added any player traits to his game but ability wise he still looks very good let's have a comparison right here we are with his technicals if we add the age 33 to it let's have a look his corners improved so he, he did improve from being 28 years old which you, you don't tend to see much improvement when they get older but that's good his crosses stayed the same his dribbling has decreased massively his finishing's the same first touch is the same free kick taking improved by two so that's good his headings decreased his long shots decreased long throws are the same marking improved Passing the same, penalty taking improved, tackling is improved, and his technique is still on 18. Here we are with his mentals, and his aggression stayed the same, his anticipation stayed the same. He's got a little bit less brave, but maybe that comes with age. Don't want to get injured. Um, his composure is the same, concentration has decreased a little bit, decisions is the same, determination is the same. His flair is still on 17, his leadership is still 9. And if we look at the rest of them, yeah, they've all stayed the same. So not much has changed with his mentals. If we have a look at his physicals, and these are the ones you'd expect to start decreasing, especially when a player gets to 33. And his acceleration has decreased. He's got a little bit slower. His agility has decreased, but he is a bit older. He's in his 30s. His balance has gone down by one. His jumping reach is the same. His natural fitness is still on 40, and that's, that's a decent amount because if a player's got a lot of natural fitness, you'll know they can last into the later stages of the career and they won't see a massive drop off in their ability. His pace has gone down by one, stamina has gone down by two and his strength is still on 11 and he still weighs 11 stone 11 pounds so he's not put on a, a lot of weight in his 30s, he's, st he's stayed the same with that. If we have a look at his history you can see he's about to start his 8th year at Lille, he played a lot of games, I'm assuming you know he's going to be one of their all time greatest players. I mean, they're not the most glamorous club, no offence to Lil, but they're not. But it just shows you that, you know, they've had a tycoon takeover, they've spent big on Martin, and he's given them the best years of his career. After all them years of being loaned out to different teams, having a stint in the Premier League, he's gone, do you know what, I like it here, and I'm staying. If we have a look at his competition history while he's been at Lil, and you can see he's been running up in the Coupe de France, he won the Trophée de Champions, he's won the Coupe de France, runner-up in the Troop the Champions, obviously won the Coupe de League and they were runner-up in the UEFA Super Cup, so you know, he's, he's won a couple of trophies, I'd like to have seen him win more. Now, with him being world-class still at 33, I just wondered if he ever had the chance to win the Ballon d'Or or would being at a team like Lille affect that? And if we have a look, he never did, unfortunately, he never won the Ballon d'Or. Um, I think it's been won by Regens for the last few years, but you know, 
I, I like the fact that he decided to stay put with the team and, and was loyal to him for his career. Will he finish his career though at Lille? Let's find out. Here we are, we've jumped to the year 2036. As you can see, Martin Odegaard has retired. He didn't become a coach, he didn't become a manager, he's just decided to finish and uh, probably live the life of luxury for the rest of his life. Now, as you can see, he played for Lille a whopping 334 times, scoring 51 goals. Ended his career in the reserve, so he never went anywhere. Never had a big money move to China, finish off his career. Never went to America to finish off his career. He stayed loyal with Lille till the absolute end. And if we have a look at Lille's best 11 of all time, there you can see Martin in the attacking midfielder centre role. He's one of their all-time greats, so... He did have a good career. He probably didn't win the trophies he would have won if he'd have played for a more glamorous club, maybe. If he'd have stayed at Chelsea or Real Madrid, maybe, and, and gone for some of the big ones. But you know what? I like the fact that he stayed loyal to Lil. So I hope we've shown you a good insight into Martin Odegaard's potential career and maybe shown you something that you've maybe looked at and gone, Do you know what? I quite like him as a player. I think I could make him even better if he was at a bigger club. Say Liverpool, for instance, because honestly, as a Liverpool supporter, it'd be really interesting in signing for Liverpool. So that's always something to think about. So all I want to say is, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy this episode, don't forget to hit the like button. If you're new to FM Scout, feel free to subscribe. And don't forget, if you've never done this before, go and check out fmscout.com. Brilliant website. Lots of things to download. Lots of downloadable content. Lots of stories to read. Lots of graphics and things you can add to your game. It is a fantastic website. Check it out, sign up, it is brilliant, all free. So yeah, that's been me, Bood FM. Thanks for watching, take care and have a nice day.